I'm a typical girl and I like clothes, accessories, but at the same time, I felt that that is definitely not enough for me to sustain you know, my daily life. So yeah, that really woke me up in the sense that I needed to figure out how can I save money and also grow the money. My parents were very upfront about money. They always told us, you know, the traditional things like you gotta save for a rainy day. So I realized very quickly that you know, saving is something I wanted to adjust first because that is what I could deal with straight away. But after that, I needed to focus on how to grow those savings because our money is eroding away in terms of purchasing power. So I was very aware of that, very cognizant, right? So after adjusting my savings, I needed to see what I could do to grow the money. I think before, we really did not have to think too much. I remember you, you put your money in savings and you put your money into Amana Saham. And then what happens is that, you know, you, you, you get 7% a year. And then with 7% per year, you basically double your, your nest egg every 10 years. Right? But guess what? Those days are over. And I think this is why, where I think we need to move from you know, our parents' generation are, are the saving types. My parents' generation certainly were the war generation. <laughs> survival mentality or having a nest egg was very very important um, I think the next generation was a little bit more slightly more adventurous and so on but I think the, the idea that savings can do everything that idea is outdated so I think investment now is not an option it's a necessary thing if you don't invest uh, when you're older you'll be struggling unless you have you know kids who are very very successful but you never know right you know, these days is not you can't depend on your kids and they have kids they're gonna have kids too Investment has been, I guess, reserved for you know the select few who are actually in the know. But as we move into the new era of a knowledge economy and the accessibility of it all of social media, where a lot of people are talking about the same thing, so investing has become very popularized. But what really pushed me was that I had a couple of friends who were learning how to invest in stocks together and. You know, peer pressure is real. Like when they're talking about, oh, I bought my first stock already, have you? And you know, you have some FOMO factor as well, right? The fear of missing out. So sometimes you can make it work in your advantage. And in my case, it worked in my advantage because I felt like, you know, I've spent some money learning how to invest in stocks and I've spent a lot of time as well. Why am I still so fearful? And why am I not taking a step forward? Yeah, I think it's intimidating because um, um, we don't know. I mean, if you don't know, then then it's intimidating, right? Best thing that hap that's happening now is that things that were only available to you know a small section of society who had the income, etc., is now available to everyone. I think that's the beauty of what's happening now is that you know the investing is no longer oh you must have five thousand ringgit before you can do anything or kind of thing. Now you can have one ringgit and you can start doing that. I think fintech allows for you to actually go beyond savings to invest and invest for your future, invest for your children's future. You know, so the biggest thing in terms of doing that is that we have to come back to this area of financial literacy. Those tools are fantastic. They're now accessible. So fintech will have done their jobs if they make all those investments accessible to you. But the next thing is the understanding. Yes, understand your risk profile, understand your goals, uh, work with someone who can help you with that. Without financial literacy, you'd be clicking all kinds of buttons and you'd be going to all five, all different directions. You know, so basically get that financial uh, literacy, uh, get on top of it, and then the financial world's your oyster. Actually, a lot of us out here are trying to figure out how to earn more money and how to make our money grow and how to eventually get our money to work for us. And people always tie this analogy together where your investment pool, it is like a plant and it is, you know, small at the start, like us as like fresh graduates. But as you sow more seeds and as you water them, as you tend to your investments, they will grow over time and there is going to be a lot of noise as well. So you need to filter that out and uh, do your best to stand your ground and make your own judgement. I really do believe when you figure money out, 
people are free to make the sort of impact that they want to. And you know, millennials, we love talking about impact. We love being on this planet to do good and leave it better than when we came into it. So if more people are secure with their money, they are enabled to be those sort of people. And they're also nicer people generally, right? When you are freed up, you are more willing to share your knowledge. And when you do that, you can affect more people around you.